Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Hello there, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. The title of today's Bible study video is, What is God's Definition of Marriage? Today we're going to go into our Father's Word and we're going to see exactly what the Holy Scriptures say about marriage. And I feel led to do this video because today, in these last days I should say, we see that man has made same-sex marriage legitimate in many places in the world. And so there are people who have absolutely no knowledge of our Father's Word because they don't study it. Well, I'm going to show you what God doesn't say a marriage is first. And then we're going to spend the rest of our time dealing with what a marriage is according to God. So Romans chapter 1 tells us what happens when people refuse to be ruled and governed by God Almighty when they want to go their own way. And Romans 1 26 says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So when you see two women getting married, that is not something that God ordained. What they are practicing is lesbianism, and that is what God calls unnatural sex. He says it's against nature. And the reason why he says that is because two women cannot produce a child. All right? Then verse 27 in Romans 1 says, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use, of the woman burned in their lusts one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly that word unseemly means indecent and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat so God clearly states in the Old and New Testament that gay marriage is not something he established and not something he condones. So, we're done with that. We're going to deal now with what a marriage is according to God. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 19, and this is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, speaking. In verse 4 and 5, he says, Have you not read... That he, referring to God Almighty the Father, which made them at the beginning, made them male and female. For this cause will a man leave father and mother and will cleave to his wife and they too shall be one flesh. So here is Jesus telling us that God made the two sexes, male and female, and because he made the two sexes, he also established the marriage union. He said a man will leave his father and mother 
and will cleave to his wife, and those two will be one flesh in God's eyes. So that is a biblical marriage in the eyes of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul, being guided by the Spirit of God, wrote, Now concerning the things whereof or of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. He says, good for a man not to be touching a woman in a sexual way that is not his wife. That is fornication. When you're having sex outside of wedlock, it's a sin. Then he says in verse 2, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man, M-A-N, have his own wife, W-I-F-E, and let every woman, W-O-M-A-N, have her own husband. So, the Bible clearly tells us that a marriage in the eyes of God is between a man and a woman. Why? Because God made the two sexes, and when they come together sexually, they can get pregnant and they can produce a child. It's not rocket science. So even if a person doesn't believe in God, doesn't want to hear nothing about the Bible, it's common sense if there's nothing wrong with you mentally. A man and a man can't have a child. A woman and a woman can't have a child, okay? Now let's go back to the beginning. In Genesis chapter one, verse 26, it says, and God said, let us make man in our image. The reason why he says us and in our image is because the Godhead it consists of the Father, Jehovah God, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Those three make up the Godhead. So God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, the birds of the air, and over cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man and gave him authority on this earth over the lesser creations. Now when we jump down to jump go to Genesis 2 7 and we see when God made the very first man. It says there in Genesis 2 7, and the Lord God, when you see the word Lord in capital letters in the King James Version, it should have been his name Jehovah in the Hebrew Yehovah. And Jehovah God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So that is how the first man got here. Now when we go down a little further in Genesis 2 to verse 18, it says, And the Lord God said, or in Jehovah God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet, for him, or help fit for him. So God created the very first man. He was by himself for a while, and God says, it's not good that he's alone. I'm going to make him a help that's fit for him. Jump down to Genesis 2.21. And the Lord God, or Jehovah God, caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, which is the very first man he created. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and close up the flesh instead thereof. So he operated on the very first man named Adam. 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her to the man. So God is the one who created the first man, Adam, and the first woman who he named Eve later. They are the parents of us all. Adam and Eve, we all come from them, those two people. 23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. 24, 
Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall or will cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. So God is the one who established marriage. And it does not matter that wicked, rebellious, ungodly mankind makes laws to make same-sex marriage legitimate. It does not cancel out God's law. God's law still is what matters because all the people going along with this gay marriage thing and the people who support it, every last one of them is going to answer to God for that sin on, ju on judgment day if they don't repent. Now, there's a lot more to marriage than just a, it being a man and a woman. There are positions of authority in a marriage. In 1 Corinthians 11.3, the apostle said, The head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now this is important because today we got a lot of people who are married, and they don't understand that God has positions for the husband and the wife inside the body of Christ. I've seen a lot of so-called men take a back seat to their wives and their wives are taking their position as the head, as the leader. When he says the head, he's the one who's supposed to be leading the man in a marriage, not the woman. You have a responsibility as a real man of God to lead your family in the ways of God. You're supposed to lead them in prayer and in the work of God, that's what you're supposed to be doing. So I felt led by God to do this video because I know a lot of men who've taken the back seat to their wives and it ain't supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be leading. And that's one of the things that motivate me to do this video because I know people in marriages like that and they don't realize as a man you have a headship over your wife, you're supposed to be leading your family, not following like a little child. No. The Bible clearly tells us that women cannot do everything a man can do in the body of Christ. Now, you may not like what I'm about to read, but I didn't write the Bible. First Timothy chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 11. The Apostle Paul be guided by the Spirit of God, says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. He's talking to the church and what's supposed to go on in a church. Verse 12, he says, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now he's talking about in the church. Women should not be standing up on the podium as the pastor with authority over men teaching. Uh -uh. Not supposed to happen. When we look up that word teach in the Strong's Exalted Concordance of the Holy Bible, it's the Greek word 831, and it comes from a compound of 846, and it's and a word that means a worker, and it means to act up oneself that is figuratively dominate. When you dominate, you take control. Men are supposed to lead in the church of Jesus Christ. A woman cannot have authority over men. Now, there are women that God has gifted to preach and teach. That's fine. She can do all the preaching and teaching she wants to outside that church building. Or if God moves her to start a woman's ministry, and she's teaching nothing but women and got nothing but women under her, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I have to make sure I say that. In verse 13, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. That's why the woman cannot have authority over the man in the church, nor can she have authority over a man in a marriage. Now, there are women in the world who are prime ministers and heads of states and people in in charge of all kinds of huge corporations, absolutely nothing wrong with that in the world. 
But in a marriage and in the church, the woman can't have authority over the man. I have to make sure I say that. Verse 14 says, and Adam was not deceived. Here's another reason why God put it this way. Adam wasn't deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Satan got Eve to eat off of that tree. He tricked her. He deceived her. Adam, what, what he did actually was worse than he, because that, I'm going to be nice because I always get mad and call them names. So I, I got to stop doing that. He willfully took that fruit from his wife knowing what it was because he, she had his nose wide open. And I see a lot of that today. That's why men aren't supposed to follow women like that in a spiritual way. Because our mother Eve deceived our father Adam and messed up the whole entire world. And that's why when I see these spineless jellyfish of men letting their wife tell them what to do and lead them around like a little puppy, I think they are pathetic. And I'm doing my best to try to encourage them. You know, they can get mad at me for saying that. But you could call yourself a Christian and a man of God all you want. If you're following your wife around, if you have reversed roles, she's the head and you the tail, you are not doing what God told you to do. And you're going to be in trouble, brother. So I feel led by God to do this because I see a lot of weak men who are following women around and letting women tell them what to do. I ain't going to call no names. It's not supposed to be that way. I know men who are not even advancing in life because they're worried about what the wife, is do, wife or girlfriend's doing. Uh -uh. You need to be focused on what God called you to do and not be sitting around looking for them. I know men who don't even have any money and he's worried about what his wife, not wife, his girlfriend going to do or his wife is going to do. No, you need to get a job like a man and work and get yourself in a position where you can make money and be able to do for yourself and if you have any kids uh, uh, and, and your children. You know, I told a young man a plan. I told two young men a plan where they can put themselves in a position to have a career in truck driving. I hope and pray that they do it because they're young enough to do it. One is in his 20s, one is in his 30s. If they go and get, go through the truck driving uh, school and learn, and after one year out there on the road, they will be professional drivers in a position to always make money and provide for themselves and their families. See, a lot of people, young and old, are caught up in their emotions and how they feel. Well, I'm here to tell you how you feel don't mean jack in the real world. In the real world, you have to have a J-O-B. If you're going to have some money and you need money in the real world for everything. So your brain needs to get those spider webs off and, and, and get yourself together. Because romance with no finance is a nuisance. You can't live off love. I'm just going to give it to you raw. And it just breaks my heart when I see people doing that. And when I tell them and they don't listen, and then they'll quit talking to me because they know or think I'm going to keep telling them. No, I'm not going to keep telling you. If you like it, I love it. There are people who quit talking to me. I call them and they don't answer the phone because they think I'm going to tell them something they don't want to hear. I know a brother, I'm going to call no names, who's pursuing a woman that he wants. And he's been pursuing her for a year or maybe a year and a half or two and I said, my brother, it doesn't take that long when both people really want each other. Something's not right. If I'm interested in a woman, I'm going to make it known to her. If she shows that she's interested back in me, we'll take about a, a, a year to get to know each other. And then we're going to go forward and get married like two mature grown-ups. But if i got to convince her that... She needs to be with me. That is not the woman for me. And this is what I told this brother. I said, if you got to convince a woman that you are a good guy, she can't see that, then you need to leave her alone. But 
this brother is caught up in his emotions and he don't want to leave her alone. He has been deceived by the devil. He has convinced himself that God want him to get this woman. Let me tell you something, brother. If God sends a woman to you, it is not going to be complicated at all. Not even a little bit. When I got married to Verdale, that was the only wife that God sent me. Those first two trifling women, that was my doing in ignorance. I wasn't looking for no wife. God showed me Verdell, and when I started talking to Verdell, we started dating, boom, a couple of months we were married. We've been married for 13 years now. So if God sent it, it ain't that, it's not complicated at all. So I'm standing on the outside looking in, and I love my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I see disaster looming in the darkness. But if they want to go in there, hey, go right ahead. I still love you. You don't have to avoid me. You don't have to quit talking to me. I still love you. And when you're catching all that hell, if you talk her into finally marrying you, I still love you. So, you know, it's a lot of people in this situation, and that's why I felt led to do this video. They see what it is, but their emotions govern is governing their life, so they want to keep going anyway. You know, a woman who has her own money is a blessing, but if you got to talk her and convince her into marrying you and try to persuade her and woo her and all that, that is not the woman for you, because she should be just as excited about you as you are about her. And then y'all could come together smoothly. Now I'm saying that because I'm trying to help this brother. And not this one brother. I know another brother like that too. I know a bunch of people like that. So I know this video is going to be for more than the two people I'm, I have in mind. And then there are women who are trying to chase a man. Baby, if that man don't want you like you want him, he is not the man for you. And I'm going to tell you like it is in the real world. Most men, I didn't say all of them, most men are dogs. The only thing that man wants from you is some sex. And he may throw you a couple of dollars every now and then, but he ain't trying to marry you with your three kids or two kids or whatever it is. That's just the way it is. So you need to give your life to the Lord and focus on what's really important. If God has a man for you, he's getting him ready right now. You ain't got to look for him. And women who think it's some man's job to take care of them. Uh -uh. That's the white man's uh, philosophy. That's his doctrine. That ain't biblical. That ain't what this Bible teaches. The Bible teaches in Proverbs 31 that virtuous woman had her own business and everything she put her hand to was blessed because she was a woman of God. Women are equal to men. They are not less than men. And God has blessed women with gifts of intelligence and talents just like he has men. And so I'll say this to the young men and I'm going to say this to the women. And I'm going to say this to the older men and the older women. You do not need to get with some grown-up who can't take care of themselves. Ah, ah. Grown men and grown women work and make their own money. If you get with someone of the opposite sex, it should not be for money. It should be because you love that person and they love you and y'all want to spend your life together and build a life together. If there's any other reason for you getting together, that's not biblical. That's not biblical. If you got to convince somebody to be with you, you're going to be trapped dancing all your life trying to impress them and convince them. And I'm here to tell you that is very exhausting. It is. They don't want you for who you are. You have to try to impress them and beg them. And you get them and now you got to keep doing that. Uh-uh. That is not biblical. I see my brothers headed down the wrong path, two of them. And I know there are women doing the same thing. And that's why I felt led by God to do this video. Uh-uh. You better stop doing that. Because if you do get them, <laughs> you're going to regret it eventually. Anyway, let's move on. And so, the Bible clearly tells us there's a distinction in the roles of a man and a woman, spiritually. Spiritually. 
Now, the Bible says as far as marriage is concerned, this is what wives are supposed to do. I'm giving you the short version of it. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord. 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. 24, therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, women who have a lot of pride in them, they have a big problem with this. And they do not submit themselves to their, to their husbands, to their own detriment. See, you got to realize that we all got to go before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. Christ is not only the man's head, he's the wife's head, he's everybody's head. And so when you wives refuse to do what the Lord says here, you're going to be in trouble on judgment day. And that's why a husband shouldn't get all bent out of shape if you got a smart mouth wife who rebellious and won't listen. No, don't, don't leave it alone. Leave it alone. You have to leave it alone because God's going to take care of them in his time. Now, a wife should not submit to an ungodly husband, even if he calls himself a Christian. If he's telling her to do bad stuff, ain't no way in the world, she, if, she, if her brain works, she's supposed to go along with that. Now, what do men supposed to do toward their wives? And this is a big one. In Ephesians 5.25, it says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, that is huge. You're supposed to love your wife like Jesus loves all of us. Because the church is the people who believe in Jesus, not some building. And Jesus died for us. So you're supposed to be willing to die for your wife. When we jump down to verse 28 in, he in Ephesians 5, it says, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. So if you don't love your wife, you don't love yourself. Why? Because in the eyes of God, when y'all got married, y'all ceased from being two and you became one flesh. So I'm hoping this helps somebody. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, the apostle Peter wrote, likewise, you husbands. Dwell with them, talk about our wives, according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. A lot of husbands' prayers are hindered because they mistreat their wives. They treat them like second-class citizens. They're cruel to them. Some uh, verbally abuse them and call them horrible names. Some of them slap them and beat them. And women can get on your nerves, men, I understand. But you still got to maintain godliness. If you see yourself getting a little ticked off because of some things your wife is doing, you have to pray to God to remind you that they are the weaker vessel. Women are not like men. They are an entirely different creation. There are men and women on this earth who don't understand that. So that's why I said, let me take the time to say that. Men do not think like women, and women do not think like men. They don't. We're two entirely different creations. That's why he says, husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. You've got to remember that, men. We are very logical, rational thinkers, unless you're some kind of wimp. And there are a lot of men who are feminine and weak and wimpish. I'm talking about real men, okay? I ain't talking about wimps who take the back seat to their wives and comfortable with it. Men who let their wife drive all the time and just sit there smiling like a little child, who carry on like children. No, I'm talking about real men who lead, men who make the decisions, men who are out in the forefront doing the work. I'm talking to real men right now. I'm talking to wimps. 
So he says, deal with them according to knowledge. Remember that Adam was first. The man was first. Remember that Adam is made in the image of God. You know, you have these false teachers that say that men and women are made in the image of God. Ain't a scripture in the Bible that supports that. No. Man is made in the image of God. God is God the Father, not God the Mother. So you're made in the image of God. You need to stand up and act like a man. Women are the glory of man because they were made from the very first man. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11. And so you've got to remember that. She's a weaker vessel. She's weaker physic physically a lot of times. I'm not going to say all times because you've got these big bull daggers, they call them. Women who want to be men, who lift weights and they're strong. And they're physically stronger than some men. So that's not always the case. But the weaker vessel implies a lot of different things. She it's more governed by her emotion than logic, unless something's wrong with her. Because you got some women who want to be masculine. These are women who have been deceived by the devil. A lot of them have been abused, and that's how they end up becoming lesbians. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about normal women right now. They're very feminine. They're very emotional. And that's the way God created them, and it's not a sign of weakness. Because God designed the man and the woman the way they are. And when they come together and can learn to appreciate those differences, they complement one another. So I want to make sure I say that. So I'm hoping and praying that the men out there who see this video don't be so offended that I'm talking about them. Because they're sitting in the back seat and their wife got the pants on and calling all the shots. And realize that that's not what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be in the lead. They're supposed to be the man. And I hope the women who see this don't get so offended that they, I don't care what he said, but they realize that they are in rebellion against God. If you are a woman married to a weak man, where you call all the shots, you tell him what to do and treat him like a child, and he goes along with it, you are in rebellion against God. You're not supposed to be doing that, sister. Even if you got a wussy, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be under his headship. He's supposed to be the leader. You should encourage him to be the man if he's too weak to do it on his own. You should push him out there and say, you're supposed to be doing this. Don't you take the lead over your husband. I see it too much, and it bothers me. It makes me sick. That's why I can't be around certain people for very long periods of time because if you're not a real man, I don't want to be around you anyway. Now, I will come around you as a minister to try to help bring you up. But if you ain't that way, I don't want to be around you anyway. You know, my wife told me that I have to come in at 6. How old are you? I'm 47. And you don't see nothing wrong with that. No. Nope. Okay, little boy, run along and do what mama tells you. This is pathetic. Pathetic. And women who want to be the boss, shame on you for taking advantage of your little wimp husband. I've had those same women try to run that crap past me. And I said, ah, ah, ah. I said my name is not whatever her husband's name is. You ain't going to do that to me, sister, so don't even try it. I ain't the one. And, you know, I don't have to be here. I don't have to come to your house for nothing. So you're not going to do that to me. I thank God every day of my life that he didn't let me be a wussy. I know it was only by the grace of God that I didn't grow up to be a wimp and a wussy. So I thank God for that. And I'm doing this video to try to help the wussies stop being wussies and be men. Stop being a wimp. God don't want you to be a wimp. You're supposed to be a man. You're supposed to act like one. And you women who want to be men, you better stop. You better learn how to be a woman and cut that foolishness out. Because we all got to go by the judgment seat of Christ. So there we have it from the scripture. A marriage is between a man and a woman. Period. In the eyes of God. Anything else is a sin. And the man is supposed to be the leader, masculine, following in the footsteps of Jesus. The woman is supposed to be a beautiful counterpart, feminine, 
supporter in a marriage and in the church. That's what the Bible teaches. So I hope and pray that this helps somebody out there. God bless you. I'll see you next time. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section.